Hey. Do you like my headband? What headband? <laughs> it blends right in the background. Do you get it? Hey, I was just here uh, cleaning my office, and um, I recalled a conversation I had this morning with a uh, partner that I'm working on another project with who asked me, do you read Gabe Kapler's blog? I don't. No, the answer was no. However, I was intrigued because the article in question was addressing a subject that I myself am very uh, passionate about. Now, here it is. This is uh, Gabe's website. It is called uh, Cap Lifestyle. You can you can see the lifestyle there. Um, it's caplifestyle.com, so go check it out if you want to. Uh, what intrigued me was this first part of this article. Now, the title doesn't really tell you what it's about, but I'll give you a quick synopsis without reading the whole thing. Off the Beaten Path, Reimagining Teammate Behavior. Now, that's a nerdy title. I'm a nerd. I like it. However, you don't really know what it's about, so you got to read a little bit. Change can be uncomfortable. Sometimes the fear of change keeps us locked into habits and ways of thinking that are no longer serving us. Thriving requires pushing through that discomfort. He's right. Yesterday, I made the case of why we should reimagine the schedule for relievers to reduce volume and improve performance and health. The article continues on to explain what the typical reliever schedule looks like. And in order to kind of understand the argument he's making here, you have need to have a good grasp of what a schedule, a day-to-day -day schedule will look like for a normal night game versus day games and such. So for a night game, seven o'clock game, 645 in Oakland, whatever, 645 to 715 is the normal start time. Most relievers have stretch and throw as a group somewhere between three and 345. Batting practice starts um, half an hour or 45 minutes after that, pitchers are, one, not as common anymore, but still some teams do it. The A's were one of them. Ha need their pitchers to shag BP for the hitters. So when the hitters are hitting, they're hitting balls in the outfield. Pitchers got to go catch them or pick them up and throw them in. I've always hated that. Everyone's always hated that. It's the worst. But the biggest thing is we don't want to be playing catch while the balls are being hit. Because if I'm playing, trying to focus on what I'm doing and feeling stuff, how ball's coming off my hand or working on you know through pull downs or my carrier, whatever, and I'm also trying to make sure I don't get hit from a ball hit at me, which it does seem like no matter what side of the field you are on, that is the side of the field that all the hitters are practicing hitting to every single time you're out there. It's weird. I, it might be recency bias. I'm probably just making that up, but it sure seems like I'm, I have a bullseye on my neck. And I don't like it. So we want to avoid that. So we go out, we play catch at 3.30, and, and uh, then we don't have much to do except for shag and maybe work out or do whatever before the game. And for me, as a closer last year, uh, that was six hours later. So if you can imagine, okay, good job, man. See ya. The checking out and then checking back in can really, really wear on your energy levels. This is very interesting. He also says here in the article, and I, I will show you right now, Relievers are walking out to the pen for that night's game with less than a full tank. They used a bunch of energy just being at the field and going and playing catch and then letting their body literally physically cool down before the game. Every reliever knows the scenario. The phone rings, the bullpen coach says you're up and you're going to post and you're going to throw max effort because that's all you know how to give. Yeah, because that is our one job. Uh, there's a saying when I, when I, I didn't run very much anymore because of the way that my body tightens up when I run too much. So I'd watch the young guys run and I'd say, hey, you guys know you can't run it to the plate. That's a common saying. You can't run it to the plate because running only does so much for you as a pitcher in my opinion. And I saw only improvement in my pitching as opposed to the vice versa when I stopped running as much. Now that's not true for everybody. Let me be very clear. I'm, this is not a blanket statement about how running stupid and no one should run. What my point is, everyone should do what they need and you should have space to do it you need. And there is a sweeping traditionalism that you should be doing what everyone else is doing on the team to show that you're part of the team. That is like a kicker running all of the same drills as a running back in the NFL just to say, hey, I know you have to do a lot more than me, so I'm going to do it with you because teammates. Like That doesn't matter because all the thing that matter is that running back does his job and the kicker makes his kicks. That's the only thing that matters. And if we're worried about other things, we're worried about things that don't matter. So he proposes shaking this up a bit. Let's shake it up. Let's, let's let a reliever leave early if he's not going to pitch that night because he's opening the next day. Let's let a reliever who has pitched two or three times in a row have a day where he doesn't come to the field at all. 
and he gets to hang out with his family. He gets an he gets an impromptu off day because he's not going to play, and he needs the rest. The mental rest is more important, not just as important, more important in most situations than your physical rest. More important, more important. If anyone learned that this year, it's me. More important. Why can't we do those things? Why don't those already exist? Or why aren't they common? Some teams do them. Some teams are cool with it. And it's because, and this is the example he gives, and I, I think it's a great example, and I think I know who said this because I'm well acquainted with some of the relievers on his team, but I won't, I won't dox them like that. They say, why do we do this this way? Why do we do it this way? There are a couple of reasons. Banging means canceling or getting rid of, by the way, just, just in case you didn't know that. I'm sure after reading, I'm recommending banging pregame throwing. Some major league vets and coaches across the league collectively roll their eyes. Ugh. In fact, I, in fact, I was discussing this with a very talented veteran lever. He said, I have to throw before the game to feel like I'm prepared to help the team. Okay. I'm asking him if it had ever been raining all day and he didn't get to throw as he, until he warmed up for the eighth. He acknowledged it, so I followed up to see how he did. He said that he performed well. So it isn't the actual performance, but rather the display of helping the team that's at stake. It is literally peer pressure. A lot of the things we do and feel like we need to do is because of peer pressure. This happens everywhere. This is everywhere, all over the place, right? This is in every job. Like, I should show up at that time because everyone else will be there at that time. I don't want to walk in when everyone else is there. That's interesting. You're saving yourself from an awkward situation. You're saving everyone else from an awkward situation. However, when it comes down to your physical you you are expending physical energy and taking away from your ability to do your one job that you have that literally the only thing anyone actually cares about if you are hurting yourself your ability to do that because you're too worried about what everyone else is going to think if you take a little bit more rest than they're taking then what was the value because at the end of the day you are not going to be given a job and you are not going to be given opportunities because of you because you were supporting your teammates what was that i've never had anything like that happen moving on that's going in the video but that last part of that statement helping the team it's helping the team that's at stake it's the appearance of doing something or or valuing something that is the problem. I have a very interesting story about this as well. When I had Tommy John surgery, it literally tore me apart to go to games every day, to go and be like, I am not playing this year. I'm not gonna have anything to do with helping this team win a game, but I have to sit here and watch three hours of baseball every night, wanting to be out there, wanting to get better, wanting to have something that like stokes a fire in me, but I have to be patient and take this one, one arduous step at a time. It drove me nuts. I hated it. I hated it. I I, I hated it. It gave me actual, like visceral, I, I just want to be there, right? And so I had to be very honest about that in order to like get some space to go home every, every once in a while. I stayed for most games, but I still just like, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it off. I'm taking off. You always don't need me. But it became like you need to go to games so that the organization doesn't forget about you. But they not, they didn't forget about you. They're not going to. You being at the games every time is not going to score you any more points if you're going for a job the next year. It's not. So why do we do these things? It's because we feel like we have to. The better we are at being honest about what we need as players and learning that stuff, like I need the extra rest here and saying, hey, I think I need this rest, and then someone else saying, hey, do you think you could push yourself to this level? And you're like, no, I, yeah, I think I could do that. And you're having that, that rapport, that conversation. That honesty, that vulnerability, and that clarity is going to pay dividends in so many ways because now you can be trusted to make decisions moment to moment, day to day, in the game and outside the game. You don't need to be micromanaged. There needs to be no staff paying attention to everything you're doing to make sure you're doing the right things. Um, it makes everyone's life easier. And if you have 26 guys that are all comfortable saying, hey, I need this, or I feel this, and they can just say what they need to say, that team is going to have the best chance of having all 26 guys be the best version of themselves at the same time, which then produces what? Wins. Which is why we're all here, right? So he makes a great point, but he's also correct in saying, the collective eye roll is real. And people go, ugh, oh, another guy trying to shake things up for the sake of shaking things up. No, it's just making things easier. You do not need to make things hard 
superficially. Life isn't just about checking boxes. It's about doing the things that make it better, easier, more efficient, whatever, whatever it is, the best version. And if that includes getting a little bit of extra rest because you need a little extra rest, I think that you should have the ability. There should be space to do that. And the, the teams that do that the best have the best results. That's something that I valued. That's something that I tried to be a champion of this year. And I've been tried to be a champion of my whole career. And um, I hope that that freedom continues to be built. Anyway, I was just sitting here cleaning, about to eat some dinner. Decided to read the article. I'm going to go feed my cats. But let me know what you thought. Do you agree? Do you think that all athletes just need to work harder and actually need to beat the field longer? Let me know, maybe with some emojis down in the comments. Or um, if you don't know what to say, just hit me with a, like, like a banana bread to tell me you got to the end of this video, all right? Um, and maybe we'll do some more of these. And uh, maybe you hated it. You know what? Maybe you hated the video. If you hated the video, just uh, just rage hit the subscribe button. See you next time. Bye.